Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, NTSB releases preliminary report from Icon A5 Fatal Accident, Associations Praise Update to Product Certification Guide, GE begins GE 9X certification testing. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's May 23rd and this is Airborne Unlimited. The NTSB has released its preliminary report from an accident involving an Icon A5 airplane that resulted in the fatal injury of the two people on board the aircraft. According to the report, on May 8, 2017, about 0908 Pacific Daylight Time, the Icon Aircraft Incorporated A5 N184BA impacted terrain while maneuvering near Lake Berryessa, California. Representatives from Icon Aircraft reported that the pilot was conducting a new employee familiarization flight with the passenger, who was recently hired by the company. A witness observed the accident airplane flying over the lake about 30 to 50 feet above the water, at what seemed to be a low speed. The witness stated that the airplane passed by their position and entered a nearby cove, traveling in a northerly direction. The witness heard the engine rev up as the airplane drifted to the right side of the cove. Subsequently, the airplane pitched upward and entered a left turn, just before it traveled beyond the witness's field of view. Examination of the accident site revealed that the airplane impacted terrain and came to rest upright in the northern area of Little Portuguese Canyon on Lake Berryessa. The fuselage right wing and a portion of the empennage were located on the shoreline along a steep embankment, and the outboard portion of the left wing and left side of the empennage were partially submerged in water. AEA, AIA, and Gamma have announced the approval of an updated United States FAA Industry Guide to Product Certification. The last version of the guide was published in 2004. The updated guide will help institutionalize best practices and a new operating norm for FAA. Companies and applicants that will prove to be foundational in reaching the next level of safety and certification process effectiveness and efficiency. It incorporates changes based on lessons learned in the most recently published FAA policy guidance. The guide also establishes principles and guidance for how an applicant in the FAA can transition to a state where there is progressively less direct involvement of the FAA in detailed compliance activities, increasing the efficiency of the process while maintaining the same high level of safety. There have been significant changes in the certification processes over the last 10 to 15 years that improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the certification and design approval processes and enhance product safety. The revised guide addresses the impact of those changes and assists the stakeholders in taking full advantage of the benefits they offer. A group comprised of representatives from nearly 15 organizations worked over 18 months to improve the guide and produced a third edition of it. After the break, the GE 9X gathers steam. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Adventure offers Rotax 912 power, a basic instrument panel, and radios. Fly it away for under $120,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. Welcome back. Recently, GE Aviation began GE 9X engine certification test at its Peebles Test Operations in Ohio. The GE 9X will power Boeing's new 777X aircraft. The first round of GE 9X certification tests are being conducted on the second GE 9X production configured power plant built by GE. To prepare for the certification program, trials of the first full engine to test, GE 9X engine commenced in March 2016. 
generating critical data on the full engine system in aerodynamic performance, mechanical verification, and aerothermal system validation. As the second GE9X engine begins testing at PTO, assembly of the third and fourth GE9X engines is well underway at GE Aviation's headquarters in Evendale, Ohio. The fourth GE9X engine is slated for installation and flight tests aboard GE's 747-400 flying testbed before the end of the year. With almost 700 GE9X engines on order, the GE9X engine will be in the 100,000-pound thrust class and will have the largest front fan at 134 inches in diameter, with a composite fan case and 16 fourth-generation carbon fiber composite fan blades. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. We have an important calendar update to share, so we're going to give this one a little extra time to explain what's up. The National Aviation Heritage Invitational has moved from the Reno Air Races, where they have been hosting the event for the past 17 years, to the California Capital Air Show. They looked at a number of potential venues and felt that the California Capital Air Show was a great location for NAHI in the future, leaving them a virtually unlimited ramp footprint. The relocated event will be held September 8th through 10th at Mather Field in Sacramento, California. All aircraft have to be 45 years old or older and restored to flying condition and will be judged in five categories. The organizers would love to see a number of restored vintage aircraft on the ramp competing for the grand champion Neil A. Armstrong Aviation Heritage Trophy, which resides throughout the year at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum's Stephen F. Udvar-Hazy Center. After these messages, FAA posts drone registration details. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. In addition to other controversies raging in the drone world and in response to a large number of Freedom of Information Act requests, the FAA has posted online a large database listing some particulars of each registered U.S. drone owners. Names and exact addresses of the registered users have not been disclosed because that information is exempt under the FOIA for privacy reasons. The FAA has released a safety alert for operators calling for the development of training and line operations policies, which will ensure that proficiency in manual flight operations is developed and maintained for air carrier pilots. The FAA believes maintaining and improving the knowledge and skills needed for manual flight operations is necessary for safe flight operations. A man who stole a pickup truck and an RV eventually crashed through an electric fence at Cape Girardeau Regional Airport and tried to steal a helicopter. That's where his crime spree ended. The suspect is Charles Benedict Coker of Cape Girardeau. He has been charged with tampering first degree and stealing and a bond was set at $100,000. The FAA will be holding a workshop to discuss a controversial plan to extend the runway at Noss Field in Nevada, California which has been scaled back from 1,100 feet to 300 feet. The reduced extension was recommended by the FAA following a study by a consultant that predicted a significant decline in the number of operations at the airport by aircraft that would require the longer runway. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis ceremoniously swore in Heather Wilson as the 24th Secretary of the Air Force at the Pentagon May 16, 2017 
Wilson, who was administratively sworn in as secretary May 12, 2017, has more than 35 years of professional experience in a range of leadership and management roles in the military, higher education, government, and private industry. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. United Airlines is changing the cockpit door keypad codes on all of its airliners after the previous set of codes were inadvertently posted to a public website. In a memo to pilots, the airline instructed them to use alternative security measures to secure their cockpits, according to company spokeswoman Maddie King. King said that the security breach did not cause any flight delays, nor was it due to hacking. We are working to change the codes on all of our aircraft, she said. The airline said in a statement that the keypad codes are not the only security measures employed by pilots to secure the cockpit, and that it was working to resolve the situation as soon as possible. The airline regularly changes the codes according to the report, but over the weekend it rushed to make changes after the information became public. Cockpit security became an issue after the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Alpa said in a statement that the incident showed that secondary barriers are needed on all U.S. airliners. Such barriers had been installed on some United airplanes after 9-11, but removed them in 2012, citing cost, according to the report. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.